Up to you. Not sure what the standard no, it's, procedure it's, is. It's fine. Uh, Mr. Lomax, uh, how you doing? Yes. The, uh... Uh, not pretty well. My, uh, my name's Dan Dorfman. I appreciate you, uh, meeting with me. I'm... Sorry that we couldn't get you, uh, couldn't get into connection with your attorney, but I just want to make sure before we get started on any questions, uh, what so have you, that uh, you understand that, that you could have an attorney present uh, uh, if you wanted, but uh, if you want to waive that right, uh, we just need to uh, have your acknowledgement. Oh, sir, I'm totally fine with it. I mean, I'm almost... User disconnected like a month, from your channel. I'm already in prison, and I don't know. I always try. Never yeah. happened, so I gave up on it. I will be. I understand. I uh, I was trying to get you a uh, an attorney even on the way in here, just in case you wanted to have one present. And uh, you know, so uh, you know, it, given that you're representing yourself, you know. Uh, if you feel at any time that there's a question that you don't want to answer, you don't, you're not compelled to answer at this time. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I hope you understand that. And I'm totally now, fine with it. Most of the questions, uh, Mr. Lomax, that I want to ask you um, relate to uh, the events of uh, uh, that you were involved with, with uh, Mr. Adams. And in particular, I want to ask you uh, regarding uh, Mr. Adams's, uh, as you were a victim of uh, an assault uh, by him, attempted murder, actually. And I'd like to get some of the, the details and kind of hear your testimony directly uh, about that. And, uh, and then I may ask you some other questions. Uh, and again, if you at any time uh, do not want to answer any of those questions, it's uh, entirely up to you. Um, uh, do you, okay. I'm with it. I mean, you want to. All right. And just, uh, just I have enough paper on this. <laughs> yeah. You, you'd be surprised. I'm a little short on paper today, but, uh, you're all right. If, uh, we go ahead and record this, uh, session. I mean, I mean, no touching. All right, uh, so, uh, Mr. Lomax said uh, the incidences that we're going to be talking about here. Uh, the first one I want to talk about it, it, it goes back to uh, the events of uh, the 8th of July. Um, couple of things that uh you know that uh i'd like to know about could you tell me a little bit about your history with uh mr adams you know uh, prior to the 8th of july had you and mr adams had any contact uh actually yes we and uh what would you describe the nature Our of your contact with mr adams prior to the 8th of july 8th of July, um, guy was literally stalking me the whole day, changing cars. So he and I had an. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You you're uh, you kind of had like a hiccup there. So you, I heard you say that uh, he was changing cars on you, stalking you. Yes, he was changing cars like. Yeah, yeah, he was stalking me the whole day. He was always changing cars. Seems like he stole like every five minutes, uh, just not to get spotted, you know. But he was pretty obvious that he was. It was really shady how you. Vexia, thank you very much for the uh, yeah, following me for stuff. the uh, gifted sub to Oddities. Oddities, welcome to the uh, welcome. Thank you very much for that gifted sub. Appreciate it. I I'm doing well. Hope you're doing all right. Now, uh, what what reason would Mr. Uh, would Mr. Adams have to uh, to be stalking you, Mr. Lomax? Okay. 
there was this incident with uh, a girl named Quinn. I heard from her this that be this guy time. was stabbing her like once. And there was this one night before the 8th. I was driving around in my car. I saw on a pedestrian walk a car. Right next to the car, Quinn lay on the ground, and this Miss Adams guy was standing above her with a knife in his hands. So I wasn't really thinking. I was driving by, tried to protect her. He got in his car, and yeah, I wasn't really thinking about it. So I was shooting at him. So okay, all right. While I was shooting, I, I saw a fucking black SUV. Hey, B-Fly. Like, coming from behind. So I get into my car and drove away. Maybe it was his friends or something. I don't know. So I got panicked and I drove away. All right. It was my first interaction with him. Okay. And the uh, the black SUV, was that uh, was that leaving the scene with the uh, this Quinn person? Or was that... Uh... Yes. What I saw in, in my in my back mirror, that uh, this SUV um, had police lights, so I just left it in there. So I was there, and why should I get myself in? I see. I decided to just. User disconnected from your channel. Hey, ro uh, rock and roll. <laughs> Got to head to bed. Have a good night, man. Sleep well. Please. So. Uh, Mr. Lomax, what is your uh, relationship with uh, Quinn? And I, I assume you're talking about um, Miss Quinn Wilde. Yeah, yeah, the 18-year-old girl uh, with, with clothes, and she's always riding a fucking BMX bike. Mm-hmm. That, that would uh, fit the description. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Well... I felt sorry for this girl. I mean, she was always hustling, slinging drugs, like weed and stuff. So I bought it from her. And yeah, we became not really good friends, but I mean, we had like a relationship friend wise. I see. So you sort of, uh, you, you had like a, 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 a friendly relationship with her. Uh, she was. She was involved in pushing drugs out on the street, allegedly, and um, and then occasionally you would buy from her? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, not all the time. Like a lot. Maybe one back. I see. And, uh, and so on this particular night, you happened to spot, uh, as you were passing, you, were you passing by, kind of driving past them? Uh, when you spotted, uh, oh, what, what I was, was your angle when you first noticed, uh, Mr. Adams, uh, you know, in, in and Miss Wild? Action, um, close by the strip club. At light. And I was spotting, like, this, this car, like. So, I was curious. And then I saw Mr. Adams stay. I see. Did you hear anything that Mr. Adams might have said to Miss Wild? Uh. That um, I know your friends, and they will be next, or something like that. I see. So he said, uh, I know your friends and they'll be next. Exactly. And then, uh, did you pull through, uh, and, and go past them and then come back? Or did you, uh, did you take action, you know, at that, at that point? Oh, I took action. He was already, he was already. Avi, how you doing, man? Good to see you. And I was like parking on, on the middle of. Okay. 
And uh, how many rounds did you uh, do you recall that you fired at the uh, at that particular scene? I think it was. And did uh, did any of those strike? Did you see any of those rounds uh, strike, Mr. Adams? I think so. I mean, he was about to drive off, and then he crashed into. I see. And, w and what type of uh, what type of pistol was it? Uh, okay. A combat pistol. Uh, was this? Uh, did this happen to be the same pistol that we recovered? Um, after the uh, the incident on the eighth that you had with Mr. Adams, this would have been recovered from the uh, from the old uh, parking lot there by uh, uh, yeah. San Andreas uh, Boulevard. Yeah, same it's pistol. the same pistol. Okay. It's the same All pistol. Right. Okay, let's. Uh, Let's talk about uh, the events on the 8th. So uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, how your morning kind of got started. Uh, when you first uh, kind of woke up in the city, got off the train, you know, uh, tell me a little bit about that, that the moments before you came in contact with Mr. Adams, uh, when you became aware of him, and uh, kind of walk me through what happened there. Okay, um, <laughs> I mean, thank you very much, man. First of all, for that tier three sub. Thing is, I, I did only- That's two. awesome support, dude. Up, get off the train. And then for that uh, tier one gifted sub to Tree Pelt. Oh. Thank you so much. Yeah, Tree I was Pelt, taking my car out, regiment. and I already saw Mr. Adams, like, um, lurking around the, the saw me here. And since then, he was always stalking me the whole fucking... Where I was going, he was... All right. So he, so you ran into him at the garage. He started stalking you from there, changing cars. Exactly. So what led to uh, all the shooting down there around Pillbox and uh, Upper and Lower Power Street? Talk, talk me through that. Okay, I will tell you the whole um, story, sir, and I... So... I was driving close to the garage to park my car, so I saw him again. Like, right behind me. I got out of my car. I was trying to talk to him. Like, why is he stalking me? He drove... Like, a couple of meters. He turned the car so that he can cover behind the car and he started shooting at me. I was defending myself and I shot back. Where was where was this car and, positioned at? Uh was pillbox, like the intersection of pillbox, like the entrance to the garage. Okay. South so uh, so would this be on the uh on the Vespucci Boulevard side, that's the south side, or the uh the north side by or by the uh, San Andreas. Uh, it was Vespucci. Vespucci. Okay. So he pulls up. Oh, he's, he's on the south side. Pulls up his car in a position, takes cover, and gets out, and starts firing at you. Naturally, you return fire back, trying to defend yourself. Exactly. So he was running away. I lost eye on him because my car was disabled and I was taking one of my other cars that I had Ash, and I was looking for him so I found him up at the Vinewood 24-7 um, you're talking about the 24-7 off of Colton was... Avenue Exactly. Now, were you were you exchanging fire while driving in vehicles uh, going on the way up there, or uh, yes, you were. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Did you do you yes. recall passing by Pillbox Hospital uh, over there off of Elgin Avenue, going northbound? Was that your direction of travel? 
Yes, it was. So Bingo. I was seeing him up there. He got out of the. Um, I guess he what? Then he saw me parking my car. He started shooting at me, and yeah, I blacked out. Thing that I can remember coming towards me, knife in his hands, and stepped me like five times. I to I don't know try to hit my heart or something it was right and he was saying like this is what you got and uh, do you recall what color vehicle he was in at that time I think it was a silver SUV I guess like I said it's been a long time so I was yeah. really like suffering from blood loss there I, I completely understand but uh, when did you when did you notice him? So as you as you followed him up and you found him at the twenty four seven off of Colton Avenue, where would you say? How did you spot him? Yes. Did you spot his, him or did you spot his vehicle? I was spotting. I mean, I was. I think that he maybe got hit or hurt from my. So I was assuming end up at the 24-7 because like to get kid like I said I was driving up there just to there so I saw this parked in the middle of the road okay yeah and, and he came out like right away when I was coming closer to the store start shooting and yeah now were you inside your vehicle when he when the shots started to come uh, get fired Hey, tell me a little bit about that. No, I got out. No, no, I got okay. out of my vehicle because I was um, taking cover behind my vehicle. Because Links is drinking. No, he will start shooting again. Right. All right. Okay. Um. What was your intention? And following him up there to the uh, to Colton Avenue. I mean, I, I assume. I actually, I the first time before he started shooting, I just want to try to talk to him and ask him why he fucking stalked me all day. But I think I was up to something like setting me up because, like the day before when he was. Stabbing Quinn. Right. I think he tried to set me up there. Like and that that would have been two days before, right? That was the uh, on the sixth of July, uh, the the incident with Quinn. Possible. I I can't remember the dates. Okay. Um. When the uh, you know when when Mr. Adams uh, sh fired shots at you, you fired a, you fired back. And uh, and he f he started to flee. Yes. Uh, yeah. Did you call the police? Sir, sir, I'm not really a big fan of the police in the city. I see. All right. Um... So, Mr. Lomax, um, we do have your uh, your testimony regarding the later incident with Mr. Adams. Um, and uh, yes. we understand from statements that you made um, with uh, to Trooper Novoa um, that uh, that you that you pretty much told her that you confessed to that uh, that particular shooting. Right. Down there off the corner of Elgin and uh, Vespucci Boulevard. Yes, I have to say, after Adams um, shot me down in front of 24... Uh, Trooper Novoa and her partner showed up. I don't know what what's the partner was. So. I believe that was Trooper Parker. 
possible, I don't know. So he took me to the hospital and yeah, he just left me there. And I don't know what, what would happen. From there I had like a really blackout or something. So I can remember that I left the hospital. I think Trupa Novoa was texting me where I am. She was uh, she was concerned for your safety, Mr. Lomax. Um, you had just suffered uh, very critical wounds, like you said. Uh, you were shot a couple of times, multiple gunshot wounds, and uh, five knife wounds to the chest. She uh, she as well as Trooper Parker yeah. were very concerned for your safety and uh, that you had uh, checked yourself out of the hus hospital rather abruptly. Yeah, so I can remember I decided to drop up crowd. To get Nobody wanted to the play. Dress that I'm wearing right now. Hey Gary, thank and you very much get for a the new gun. And look like I was really angry and full with fucking painkillers, so I really So I was stealing a car around looking for it. I saw him at the ammunition with Black Out Tahoe, I guess. With, with so I was texting people that I know that drove the same car. They're always saying, like, no, we're not driving around in this car right now. And I saw him like a couple of times that he was always like driving the same kind I of see. car. So, yeah, yeah. So hey, I was Rusty. parking then. Um, hey, DJ. Jack Ellie bank right box run, run to the corner where he was parking at the red light and I started fire fire at him and I think I hit him because he wasn't moving at all after that immediately the fuck I hear fucking sirens and what I saw I think there was right behind him a fucking cop car I didn't know I couldn't see around the corner I was just yeah, there uh, there shop. actually was. That was Trooper Navoa right behind him at that time. Uh, so I run away, back streets behind the bank, and um, yeah, I was trying to run away. And uh, Trooper Navoa was always fucking trying to text me because she saw me limping over the road, I guess. And... Yeah, from there, she tried to take saying that things could be right, just go to the fuck. Think about it, I didn't do. Well, thankfully, uh, oh, go but ahead, I... Mr. Lomax, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, I saw that uh, car and drove up to Pillbox. And to be fair, I was following them and I had the intention to so I was driving up there when she left but I still realized that I had this fucking gun on me I get again back in the car and drove into the back up to hospital Seconds later, Trooper Nova showed up and she put me in custody there. And that's where you, uh, that's where you told her about the, uh, about the guns, uh, about the, uh, the firearm. And you, uh, you let her know about the, uh, the whole incident. DJ Danger gifted a sub to Rusty yeah, exactly. 404. It was Rusty. Her and, uh, Dazzler. Welcome to so... the, uh, welcome to the regiment. DJ Danger, thank you so much for your gifted sub, man. Appreciate it. And thank you for that message earlier. You're awesome, man. Thanks for that support. Okay, and uh, at that point in time, uh, that's when you uh, they decided to detain you and uh, and hold you here under the uh, yes. under the charges that you're facing. Okay. Exactly, and I confess literally right. everything to. All right, all right. Well, uh, 
Mr. Lomax, I'm, I'm still working on trying to get you an attorney. I have made contact with a gentleman by the name of uh, Alex... Uh, Alex Wyatt, he's uh, he's an attorney here in town as well, um, uh, as well as Mr. Stryker, of course. Um, and it's, uh, you know, so I appreciate you speaking here uh, with me today. And uh, just to make sure for the record that uh, Problem. Uh, none of the uh, that you were aware as uh, we spoke today that uh, you had the right to an attorney and that... Um, and that uh, in speaking with me, uh, that none of the conversation that we had was coerced or, uh, you know, under duress or anything like that. I mean, I, I don't know about Stryker, to be honest. I, but uh, exactly the same with Church. Church, ever. Guy that responded to me was Spiker, and it was like I, I believe, like he wasn't. Really I see. In. I see. Well, I I did uh, share a little yeah. bit of your case with um, with uh, you know Alex, and um, you know I think that uh, you know you do also have the option to self represent. Uh, I do think that um, you know given that you've cooperated uh, with the state, you know uh, you might be able to to work something out, work out a deal. Uh, Mr. Lomax with the, um, you know, with the district attorney's office and, uh, you know, we'll see if we can't, uh, can't move this along. I understand that they've set a uh, date for your arraignment on Saturday. Yeah, exactly. It's tomorrow. So I don't know if it would help if I have an attorney right now. I have to defend myself. I contact people, but... Like they're not really interested. Nothing. Yeah, and I, uh, I, you know, I've been doing my best to try to, uh, like I said, I've spoken to one attorney on, on your, be on your, on work, your behalf, and uh, you know, my job, Mr. Lomax, uh, is I, uh, when I contacted you at first, is, you know, uh, I'm not here to uh, to judge your guilt or innocence or anything like that. Uh, my job here is to make sure we discover the facts in the case, um, as many facts as we possibly can. Corroborate those facts, um, you know, and uh, you know, let the, the that's between the uh, the attorneys and the judge to make all the the rest of that. So, I appreciate you uh, speaking. You kind of helped I, me fill in some gaps as it relates to uh, Mr. Adams. Fine, sir. I appreciate. I hope uh, I hope after you you know you get I understand you don't like the uh, the police but I I hope after uh, <coughs> after going through this ordeal you know and uh, you get out of uh, get out of jail here that uh, you know you'll take that opportunity Mr Lomax to uh, to make some different choices in life you know it's doesn't, doesn't have to be the way it is actually sir I was really considering if I. If I will ever get out of this fucking prison, I think I will take the... After what I fucking experienced in the city, I'm... I'm... Yeah, I see. Not anymore. I can't, I can't blame you. I mean, I, I, ha I still haven't moved my wife and kids here. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful city. I love this, I love this yeah, city, yeah, but, uh, you know, it, it does have a little bit of a violent underpinning at times, and... Uh, you know, miss. Uh, anyways, yeah, I thought I have a reason to stay here because of one person. Well, who knows? Can I can I ask sure. you a question, Go ahead. sir? I am already. Oh. And get your phone. Oh, I'm. Tape. I'm sorry, you're. Uh... You, you cut out there, but I, th I think you were asking yeah, my for my card. Said. Is that right? Yeah. No, I'm asking if I can use your phone to text somebody that maybe is worried about me because I think she don't know that I'm here like for... I maybe. see. Um, I probably can't, uh, can't do that, but if you let me know who that is, I can, you know, do my best to get in contact with them. If you give me that contact information, I'll be happy to let them know. Um... Uh, 
Uh, Trooper, is uh, would you know if there's a protocol around that? Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's not authorized to use an outside cell phone, uh, but you are allowed to uh, pass on a message if you feel that's uh, yeah, what sure. Like I I can't imagine there being any harm there, uh, but if you have a message that you want to pass on, uh, Mr. Lomax, I'm be happy to do it on your behalf. No, then, sir, I appreciate uh, your help. All right, I, you you can understand um, you can understand the protocol in that. <clears throat> I understand totally, sir. I mean... All right. Well, is there uh, is there any other questions I can answer for you, Mr. Lomax? So, um, I would much appreciate to know when at which daytime it will happen tomorrow. Okay, for it. I will, uh, I do not know that specific time, but I will find out for you and I will, uh, I'll make sure that we get word to you, um, as well as, uh, if you're going to be representing yourself, then you have the right to, uh, to all the evidence that uh, has been discovered. Um, so I'll speak to the district attorney about that. Now the, this, this particular first phase of course is not. Uh, actual trial um, this particular phase would be arraignment and uh, now I'm not an I'm not an attorney okay but uh, my understanding with the arraignment is that's where you'll go before the judge uh, you'll face the uh, the list of charges that are are uh, pending for you and then you'll plead either guilty not guilty or no contest and uh, uh, guilty would you know, you you would uh, if you're going to plead guilty, then you'd probably want ahead of time to uh, or no contest. Frankly, you'd want to ahead of time to uh, to speak to the district attorney, and uh, and at that point in time, the uh, you would move into a sentencing phase. The district attorney, if you strike a deal with him uh, with the state, they'll uh, uh, they'll recommend charges to the to or recommend uh, sentence to the. Uh, to the judge, and the judge will nine times out of ten will take the uh, the recommendation of the district attorney, and uh, you know uh, pass the sentence, and then uh, and then they'll they'll work out about time served and all of that. Yeah, I mean I served already a month here inside, so I don't know. Fair. Yeah, I and just and I apologize I for know. that. Uh, our our. Policies and procedures are to move uh, through the process a little quicker, as I indicated to you when I first uh, made contact with you, and it's just been a, uh, a difficult challenge to get, uh, you know, the as you as you were well aware of the attorneys and and everything else. So I appreciate you taking time to uh, to speak with me this you know this morning. Fine. I mean, if you can get in contact with the with the attorney. I, I will and and give give him like the, the inf like the tech information like the Scordian. I shall. Oh, it would be much. I shall. And I believe uh, I believe I already passed some information to you about Mr. Wyatt, um, and I've I've done the same thing with Mr. Wyatt. So, uh, I'll, but I'll reach out just again uh, to make sure. And uh, like I said, I need to finish my uh, I'll finish my report in the morning. And uh, I will get that over to the district attorney, and I'll let him know that you and I spoke, and um, you know that he needs to. Uh, if you're, if you end up uh, self-representing, then then he'll need to share uh, the evidence with you um, that has been collected, uh, so that you can uh, represent yourself if need be. Um, of course, we want to try to get you an attorney. time then sir all right all right thank you very much uh, mr lomax uh trooper i i believe we're uh, we're done here no all right this way sir hope you uh back out through the door here 